to eat. I need something to relieve me. Go and get Phil. He's down in the pipe deck, John, but I don't know if he's got the experience. Don't worry. I'll show him the ropes. All right. Phil! Do you want to come up here, mate? Andy, can you take over? Cheers, mate. Hey, Phil, how's it going, pal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me your hands. Eight, nine, ten, yes, yeah, still there. Very funny. Right, today, my boy, we're going to learn the safety aspects about working with tubulars. Not quite the same as tongs, but the same basic safety principles apply. Now, in the last few years, there's been great reductions in the amount of accidents and lost time injuries offshore. But there's still one place where far too many accidents occur. It's here, on the drill floor. It's not surprising, perhaps. People are working under pressure, working long shifts, doing the same thing over and over. And it's all too easy to let your attention wander for a moment. And the moment is all it takes. Handling tubulars is a clearly potentially hazardous task. Whether it's moving drill pipe and collars onto the drill floor from the pipe deck, tailing in or out of the hole, or running in casing. Awkward pieces of metal are being moved about. There are obvious risks. So, what can you do to minimise the risks and to highlight the safety issues? Uh, pre planning and toolbox talks and risk assessments. Good. It's all too easy to get complacent in the need to get the job done. It's important that everyone gets involved and knows what their role is. It's crucial for a toolbox leader to make sure the talks are effective and don't just become tick box exercises. Encourage crews to take part by asking questions, by looking for new ideas. It's a good way of getting everyone to feel part of a team and being part of an open culture where operations are discussed freely. No one should be expected to do a job that they aren't trained in or competent to do. And in the same way, anyone should feel able to say if they don't feel confident about something. Now, when it comes to doing the job, whether you're the part of the drilling team or the casing crew, the basic safety principles are the same. This way. Using flush mounted slips help to keep the rig floor clear. But apart from that, it's all too easy to let the amount of gear, and people for that matter, to build up. A congested drill floor is just that extra bit dangerous. So if something isn't needed, it shouldn't be there. Get into the habit of allocating some space as storage room for equipment, and then use it. Right. Now try to get into the habit of thinking of the drill floor as being divided into safe areas and hazardous areas. Keep your time in a hazardous area to a minimum. And don't forget, the driller needs to see what's going on around him at all times. So, don't stand in his way and keep out of his line of sight, OK? And it's not just a question of looking out for yourself. You're all going to be safer if you work as a team, looking out for each other. Especially when you're well into a long shift, looking forward to a break perhaps. It's all too easy for someone's attention to wander, to drift off, and to start thinking about other things. So keep a lookout for your mates, and don't be afraid to take five, to get things back on track. It's important that any team, in any job, is made up of mainly experienced people. Take time at the toolbox meeting to stress that everyone should be looking out for a new hand, but also make it clear to him that he should be aware of his limitations and shouldn't try to carry out operations that he's not fully experienced in. People have been handing tubulars in much the same way for decades now, but they still have accidents. So what can you do about the mechanics of the job to make sure that you and your mates don't become a statistic? Always be aware of what you're doing, especially when handling heavy metal objects. Because if something does go wrong and you end up trapped between a pipe and a rack pipe, then you're going to come off the worst. 
So make sure you do things the right way. And make sure there's at least two of you guiding and pushing the tubulars around. Whether you're racking the pipe or taking it across to the rotary table and stabbing in. And remember, when you're stabbing, stand so that the driller can see what you're doing. If you're moving heavy gear, drill collars or large diameter pipe, then take advantage of a rig floor winch. When you're tailing in heavy pipe, check that the rope is double wrapped around a securing point and take time to learn how to tie and then use the proper knots. Casing brings its own problems because of the extra weight. So when you're bringing casing in through the V door, tie the dead end of the rope to one side of the door and pass the rope through a shackle on the opposite side. And if it's heavy casing, then take a double turn on the shackle to increase the friction. Again, use the drill floor winch to help you. When you're pushing pipe around, don't wrap your fingers around it. You'll probably get away with it hundreds, maybe thousands of times. But you've only got to get your hand pinched once to lose a finger. Cross your hands like this or like this. Clench your hands like that or use the palms and move and tube about. But it's not just your hands, it's your feet as well. Never leave them where a pipe can fall or where a pipe is being set down. It's always possible that a tubular can get out of control, can start swinging about. If it hits something hard, it can bounce back almost like a spring. So if it looks as though it's going to hit, then let it go and stay well out of the way. And make sure your mate is out of the way as well. From the point of view of safety, the end of the job is just as important as the beginning. Take the time to clean and stow away tools and equipment properly. And if something is damaged or worn or needs replacing, then fix it before you put it away. Or at least make a note in the handover book. Not too long after the job, find time to review it, to talk it through with everyone involved, to ask them how it went. And always be looking out for ways of doing it better, especially when it comes to safety. Don't forget, the operations manual must be updated. You should work as a team. Keep a lookout for each other and follow the rules. Good, and you'll have every chance of discussing a safe job well done rather than hold an inquest into some form of accident. All right, Phil. Over to you, mate. Thanks, Phil. Hey, and remember, you're working with me, so I want you to be able to train the next relief. See you later, partner. Ah, Phil, just a man. What about this safety meeting on manual handling this morning? Uh, well, actually, I'm a bit near.